In this example, light enters a rectangular slab of glass with an incident angle of 40 degrees. So I'll draw that in. That's I, and I know I is 40 degrees. It refracts as it enters the glass, so there's the refracted ray. And then it refracts again as it emerges, so there's a second refraction down here. And I'll draw the normal down here also, so we can refer to the angles for the second refraction. Find the angle of the refracted ray within the glass. That'll be this angle right here. Also find the angle with respect to the normal at which it emerges. So that will be this angle right here. So we're going to find both refracted angles. Given that it's glass and that our incident angle is 40 degrees. Okay, we'll do one refraction at a time. We'll start with this one where the light ray enters the glass. And this is what we know. We know that I is equal to 40 degrees. R we don't know. That's what we're looking for. And we know NI. NI is the index of refraction where the incident ray is. The incident ray is in air. has an index of refraction of 1. And NR is the index of refraction where the refracted ray is. And that's in the glass. So in R is 1.52. So then we apply Snell's law. Ni times the sine of I equals Nr times the sine of R. And we're trying to find the refracted angle right down here, R. So we need to solve this for sine of R. Algebraically, sine R is Ni times the sine of I over in R. And we know all, the, all of those numbers. That's all in our given information up here. So let's put those numbers in. In I is 1. The sine of I will be the sine of 40 degrees. And in R is 1.52. And when we calculate that sine of 40 over 1.52, it comes out to 0.4229. 0.4229. So R will be the inverse sine of that. The inverse sine of 0.4229. And we do that obviously on the calculator and it comes out to 25.0 degrees. So that's our first answer. 25.0 degrees. Now the trick to solving the second part of this problem is realizing that at this first refraction here we have an incident ray and a refracted ray. And this refracted ray for the first refraction becomes the incident ray for the second refraction. So this is now going to be an incident ray and the material for our incident ray is going to be glass and the material for the refracted ray down here will be air. So when we do the second refraction N sub I the N where the incident ray is will be 1.52, the index of refraction for glass. And N sub R, the index of refraction for the material where the refracted ray is, will be 1, the index of refraction for air. And we also need to remember a little bit of geometry. Um, and this, this is pretty simple. We're told it's a rectangular slab of glass. And that means that one side is parallel to the other. And if two lines are parallel, then two lines perpendicular to those two lines are parallel. So these normals, uh, this one and this one, are parallel to each other. So that means if we have an angle of 25 degrees right here, then this angle is also 25 degrees. So our angle of incidence right here for the, for, for the first refraction, I'm sorry, our angle of refraction, our 25 degree angle of refraction for the first refraction becomes a 25 degree angle of incidence for the second refraction. So now let's do the calculation for the second refraction. For the second refraction we know the incident angle now is 25 degrees. The refracted angle is what we're trying to find down here. In I, the index of refraction 
for the material here where the incident ray is, that's the glass. Ni is going to be 1.52. And in R, the index of refraction for this material, out here where the refracted ray is, that's air, which has an index of refraction of 1. And then we apply Snell's law. Ni times the sine of I equals Nr times the sine of R. And once again, we solve for sine of R. Sine R algebraically here is Ni times the sine of i over n r. And we put in the numbers. And again, we have all these numbers up here. So n i is 1.52 times the sine of i. And i is 25 degrees. So we have times sine of 25 degrees divided by n r. And nr is simply 1. So on the calculator, we multiply 1.52 times sine of 25. And we get 0.6424. So if the sine of r is 0.6424, then r is the inverse sine of 0.6424. And that, our calculator tells us, is 40.0 degrees. So that's our refracted angle down here, 40 degrees. Now we notice that the incident angle up here and the refracted angle are the same. If you didn't get exactly 40.0 degrees, that's because these numbers were rounded along the way. And the more accuracy, the more decimal places you took those out to, the, more cl the closer you'll get to exactly 40 degrees there. What happens when this incoming ray comes in at a certain angle, it refracts by a certain amount and then refracts back by that same amount. So the incoming angle ends up equaling the final refracted angle down here. And that's always the case if these surfaces are parallel. If they're not parallel, that won't be the case. But if they're parallel, that's how it will turn out. And there's one implication to this, and that is if you're looking through a piece of glass, the light is coming, say, say there's something over here and you are over here. The light ray comes from whatever you're looking at through the glass and then to you. So if your eye is right here, okay, you are looking in this direction. So the object exists over here at this location, but you are looking, you see it over at this location. It's slightly out of position. It's not distorted, or it doesn't seem to be way off, because this, um, this direction of travel is still the same as this. It's just been shifted over a little bit because of the refraction within the glass. So it appears to be at a slightly different location than it is if you're looking through the glass at an angle. Now, typically looking through, say, a windshield or the, the window of your car or the window of your house, this effect is very small. That distance will be very, very small because the glass is very thin. But if you look through a thick piece of glass, the change in position can be very noticeable.